lecture before you. So, of course, you have an assignment over the next several minutes. Would you please be my echo? Let the chorus sing. Hmm. Let the chorus sing. Thank you. Your job during the next few minutes is when I give you the pitch, when you hear me sing, ooh, and I give you the breath, you go, hmm, ooh. Yeah, but you have to sound like you actually mean it. Let the, no, let the chorus sing. Thank you. We must be intentional in our music. That phrase has been a large part of my life as a choral conductor, a public school music educator, and professor here at Gordon College. It means much more to me, though, than putting on a good performance. It means that people of all ages can develop the skills necessary to experience the incredible power of music. In my own teaching and in my life, I have seen how God uses music to bring people, including myself, through the darkness and point us to the light of Christ. My students have heard me say it often, let the light of Christ shine through you in all that you do. In the way you make music, in the way you teach, in the way you work with your students, in the way you do your job and live your life with integrity and joy. In the world of music education, especially in the public schools, uh, we may not be able to get on our soapboxes and quote John 3.16. Uh, yet, we can bring the beauty and depth of music to our students, knowing that it speaks not only to the intellect, but also to the depths of their souls. Mm. Nice improvement. This tune and text are known and sung, the tune and text that you just sang, mm. Those are known by music educators and school children across the nation. The phrase was set to music by Lowell Mason, who was known as the father of music education. He was a successful businessman and choir director at Park Street Church in Boston during the 19th century. Mason composed many well-known melodies such as Antioch, Joy to the world, the Lord is come, which we will be singing in a, shoe for, uh, in a few short weeks. He also composed the tune uh, of Ooh, doo, 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 When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, with which we opened worship this morning. Yet, Lowell Mason's greatest legacy was that he ensured music would touch the lives of hundreds of thousands of individuals. In 1837, Lowell Mason taught in the Boston Public Schools for free, for free, no compensation at all, in order to prove to the school committee the importance of this art for all people. Mm. It was Mason's story that gave me much of the enthusiasm I had on my first day teaching fifth grade chorus at the Riverdale Elementary School. There they were, 110 fifth grade students in the auditorium. I had their name tags out on the chairs and had carefully planned my seating chart and my rehearsal for that day. We started with warm-ups and I noticed immediately that about 40% of the students were not singing. I went over to one student and encouraged her uh, to use her singing voice. Uh, make your voice sound like the groups, I said to her. She responded simply, I'm Pepper. Hmm. Not recalling a student named Pepper on my elaborate seating chart, I moved on to another boy who was also sitting contently and not making any sound, which, as you know, in fifth grade is a very unusual thing. As I encouraged him to join in, he responded with, I'm Pepper too. 
Just as I was certain this was a terrible plot to undermine my attempts at good classroom management by having everyone use the same first name, I'm sure none of you have ever tried to do that. To a substitute teacher, perhaps? Hmm, no. Another boy chimed in and said, oh, listen to me, I'm salt. It was a slow burn, but I began to understand. The students had been divided into groups. Those who should sing were labeled by the previous music teacher as salt, and those who were to only mouth the words were labeled pepper. Oh, I am so glad you feel my pain. Good. The previous music teacher had made this arrangement based on which students could match pitch naturally and without effort, the salt group. And then those who needed instruction, instruction in order to improve were silenced the pepper group. The peppers had been left in the darkness, thinking that singing and music were only for a select few. The tools for experiencing music had been, given had been taken away from my students, and it was my job to give them back to them. We worked hard that year, and each salt and pepper knew that participation in music was for everyone, no matter what his or her previous seasoning had been. When considered against this message Lowell Mason sought to spread, this story, I believe, makes a point that goes beyond the walls of any classroom. Those who are pepper, whether because they accept such a label or simply choose not to open themselves to the gift of music, are in a kind of darkness. They're deprived of a means of access to and communion with the Lord, deprived of a powerful way of coming into the light of Christ. Let me offer an example. Would you turn in your hymnals to number 493? It is well with my soul. This is a hymn that brought the author through unspeakable darkness. Before 1871, Horatio Spafford was a well-known lawyer in the Chicago area. He was greatly involved in the evangelical movement of his time, particularly in his support of D.L. Moody. Spafford suffered financial turmoil after the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, but decided he and his family would take a vacation to Europe and then meet up with Moody and, and uh, his fellow worker, Ira Sankey, to assist with their ministry in England. In November of 1873, Spafford was detained by urgent business, so he could not set sail with his family on their planned European trip. He sent his wife and four daughters on ahead with the intention of meeting them in Europe only after a brief delay. However, halfway across the ocean, the vessel on which the Spafford women were traveling was struck by another and sank in 12 minutes. After she arrived to shore, Mrs. Spafford cabled her husband, saved alone. Their four daughters were among the 226 drowned in that ocean calamity. It was immediately after this that Horatio Spafford penned the text to this hymn. He responded with these amazing words, pointing not to the darkness, but to the light of salvation and eternity. Philip Bliss wrote the tune that amplifies these words and keeps this hymn deep in our hearts and deep in our souls. In my own life, I have been blessed to learn music that speaks deep beyond the moment and into my soul. Indeed, Spafford's hymn offers burning testimony in the beauty of its text and tune that has brought me through many dark hours. I've also seen how God uses music in other people's lives to move them through darkness and point them to the light of Christ. Would you sing this musical story with me, not as a chore or as an assignment, but with attention to the beauty of its words and its melody? Please look up and sing with one another. Music is not meant to be kept to ourselves. It is meant to be shared. There is something incredibly powerful in sharing the sound of our voices and in the understanding that is conveyed in our eye contact when we do so. 
It allows the Holy Spirit to minister to our souls, not as individuals only, but as part of a huge community of faith. This day, from generations beyond and through generations. Please stand with me and shine the light of Christ to this place and take it with you through this hymn. I need to get my hymnal. Is it ready? And the Lord. 